Well, Canada is seeking to roll out a central bank digital currency. And right now, it's sort of a, an open period where they're asking the public for feedback on a central bank digital currency. How does this going right now? This public period where they want feedback from its citizens? Well, the answer is it's not going very well. Dan Cohen, our Washington correspondent from Redacted, joins us now to dive deeper into the story. So, Dan, I'm surprised that the public is not really taking to the idea of total surveillance currency in Canada. A total shocker. I don't know how the Canadians couldn't go for this, Clayton. But yeah, so the, so the Bank of Can Canada rolled out a survey this week saying that it's seeking public input on digital currency. Watch the video that goes along with it. Here at the Bank of Canada, we're exploring the possibility of issuing a digital version of cash not to replace cash, but to ensure Canadians always have access to a safe, stable and official payment option in an increasingly digital world. You may be thinking, I don't need a digital Canadian dollar right now, and you'd be right, but Canadians may need one in the future. So the bank has to be ready if and when Parliament makes that decision. Part of being ready is hearing from you. Your input will help us make choices about the design of our digital dollar, ensuring it's convenient, easy to use, and meets your needs. So please, head over to our website and fill in our survey. So that was Senior Deputy Governor Carolyn Rogers. And, you know, first of all, note that she says that this CBDC is not a replacement for cash. Now, that's false. Here is the Atlantic Council's description of Canada's CBDC project, quote, as per the BOC, that's the Bank of Canada, the BOC's 2020 paper, the primary motivations for issuing a CBDC would be a sufficiently cashless economy, which could make the use of the Canadian dollar in its physical form limited. So that is totally false from uh, uh, that deputy governor in Canada and you know who's who's promoting this survey so they actually put the survey on twitter and it's pretty glorious the responses are as you can imagine overwhelmingly negative turns out canadians do not want a cbdc or at least according to uh, this this government survey check these out we have ann roll who says i have a digital dollar i have my bank card visa visa debit paypal apple wallet apple iphone apple watch i also carry cash in my wallet Big fat no from me. Then we have Aileen Osorio says, definitely not voting against the digital Canadian dollar. I'm not okay with surveillance and having my money canceled at the whim of the government. And then she says, uh, also not sure what are the benefits, what the benefits are given it still loses purchasing power. So, I mean, I think those are great points. We saw what happened with the Canadian truckers. Uh, uh, when they protested against um, vaccine mandates while well, their their accounts were um, frozen for engaging in peaceful protest. Um, yeah, and, and, that's and we should and we should point out that when people tried to donate money to those individuals, that money was also frozen. So GoFundMe accounts and Venmo and PayPal and all sorts of things were taken away from these people. And it's refreshing to hear the idea, of course, that this would I mean, we know that this is the plan is to replace cash. They've we know this from the World Economic Forum. The plan is to, you know, get rid of cash. So it is heartening to hear these Canadian citizens aware of this process, that it, this is the first stage. Removing cash out of the society is the next step in this process. Exactly. I mean, uh, Canadians are aware of what's going on. What's going on. They're not as dumb as that politician would, would like to think. Um, this is a great comment along those lines from It's IGC. He says, if you think the government freezing bank accounts was easy before, just wait if this hits. Mm. Uh, I, I like this one. Say your piece to the central bankers who want to give us willingly accept the panopticon upon us. Um, a, a kind of strange grammar aside, the use of panopticon, I think that's a perfect way to describe the CBD system. If, you, if you're not familiar with the panopticon, it's a circular prison with a single guard tower in the center. So it requires basically minimal or no effort from the guards and the prisoners are completely isolated from each other and feel like they're being constantly surveilled and they have no privacy. So it's a really good analogy. Right, when every transaction yeah. is, is cataloged, every movement you make 
right? Every transaction you have. And of course, I know there's people to say that this conspiracy theory about canceling or sunsetting money, this idea that money would sunset at a certain time or that it would um, uh, expire. And the in, in the United States, the Fed, the Fed Now program, the Fed has specifically written this out on their website, talking about the power of sunsetting money so that they could be used for stimulus. Maybe in this, let's say Calgary needs stimulus money. They could, you know, infuse a whole bunch of cash uh, into, into Calgary at a certain point, And they have a month and a half to use it to provide some sort of stimulus for that town. And then after that amount of time, it goes off and it's shut down. The money can be shut down. Same thing in China. China has set this up as well. So there is precedent for the idea of expiring capital. Let's all remember that. Exactly. I, he, this might be the best comment, I think. So James Dweck says, this public consultation is phony. You already know that few Canadians would willingly agree to a CBDC. You're using the survey to propagandize, propagandize the public. Shame on you, Bank of Canada, with two exclamation points. So I think that's, that's correct, that this survey... Well, it's already decided that they're going to, that they want to roll out this CBDC. They're trying to do it. I think they're trying to uh, 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 gauge the temperature, you know, get a, get a check on how the public is going to react to this and try to promote it. Um, but that's spectacularly, spectacularly backfiring. Um, you know, watch, this is a key statement from Canadian Senator Colin Deacon, who he's promoting digital ID, which of course goes hand in hand with the CBDC, and this digital ID he wants is based on DIA. DIA is the digital ID that has been implemented in Ukraine, which we've reported on extensively here at Redacted. You can go watch our, uh, uh, our reports on that. Um, so watch this statement from Colin Deacon. One of the most important things that Slava said was right up front when he said, you know, nobody was asking for this. Uh, I often think about one of my youngest, uh, one of my granddaughters. She didn't like ice cream and she wasn't asking for ice cream until she tried it. We've got to get political leadership on this because the Canadians' choice right now in Canada is to have a, a more cumbersome, slower, more expensive access to public services than, than what DIA is enabling in, in Ukraine. And I think Slava said some very important things. Getting the enabling legislation in place is as important as the technology and often more difficult than the technology. Wow, I find that really insulting. That's like saying he's trying to make this sort of horse and buggy car analogy. You know, you, you, well, you're stuck with these horse and buggies. Wait till you drive the car. And this is how it's all wrapped up, isn't it? It's all wrapped up in the idea of convenience. And you will love it because it's so convenient. You won't ever have to worry about cash. You won't ever have to worry about your wallet. It's all there, right available to you. And, uh, you know, hey, biometrically, you'll just be able to scan your face and go to the grocery store. You don't even need to bring a wallet. We'll just scan your retina and it'll come right out of your account. It's all about convenience, you stupid Canadians. You don't know how good, you know, how good this could be. Yeah, I love I love the shift from it's all about convenience, everyone, to like as soon as people are like, eh, you know, I don't really want to go along with this. You know, I like having my my personal sovereignty and freedom and ability to make my own decisions. And then it's like, get in line, idiot. You know, you're you're a stupid right. child who needs to be told what to do. So it, it happens real fast. Um, so you know, these politicians think that you are small children, that you Canadians are small children that can't make decisions for themselves. And if this uh if, if this survey is any indication, Canada's plans for CBDCs are coming, but it looks like there's going to be resistance. We'll just see how tough the Canadian resistance can be. I mean, you know, Canadians are you know very, very nice people. I know that one that one guy used two exclamation marks to describe it. Um, let's hope that they stand up to this kind of tyranny, because I really think, as, as Catherine Austin Fitz points out, it's sort of like a corral. When you put when the CBDCs is like the closing in when you wrap the when you wrap people around in this corral, the CBDCs, the surveillance state is closing in on people. And we saw in Europe just a few weeks ago, um, Christine Lagarde at the European Central Bank gloating that we now have a threshold of the amount of cash that you're able to spend in the European Union. If you go above a certain threshold, I think it was a thousand euros. If you, you if you spend more than that in cash, you're then considered basically um, on the gray market, as she described it. Basically, you're a threat. You could be construed as a terrorist. 
by using cash more than a certain threshold. So you don't want to do that. They want to get it down to like 300 euro. That's all you could ever use to like to pay cash. Like if you wanted to pay the gardener or anything like that or whatever, and you didn't want to have to put it on a credit card or all of that. So this is where we're headed, folks. And I hope that Canadians are aware of just this type of tyranny that's unfolding before them. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, we in the United States, this is coming for us too. Uh, DIA is a U.S. project. I mean, they're talking mm -hmm. about central bank, uh, central bank digital currencies here too. So, um, you know, Ukraine is a laboratory. We've showed that for, for digital ID, for CBDCs, for the fourth industrial revolution in general and all of its various components. Um, and, you know, what happens in Ukraine, not only in Ukraine, but as we see in this, in this report that they want to import that DIA project into Canada, well, that's coming to the United States too. So everyone be aware. Buckle up, North America. Dan Cohen, thank you so much for covering this story. Canada, stay strong up there, our friends to the north. Thanks, Dan. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching this segment here at Redacted. We are live every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of Redacted Rebels over at redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join the rebellion together right now by going to redacted.inc. We'll see you next time.